binary tree class. And we're going to have to add a few methods to this. I've already specified that in our binary tree class, it, just like our regular tree class, it has a single instance variable, which is root, which refers to the node at the root of the tree. Cool. We've got some constructors here, but let's jump down to the node class and figure out what does a node class look like for a binary tree node versus an arbitrary tree node. Well, in some ways it's similar. We still need the data. That doesn't change. But what's different is we don't have an arbitrary number of children, so we don't need a list of children. We know that we can have exactly two children. So we can just explicitly have a left node and a right node. And if there is no left child, left can be null. And if there is no right child, right can be null. But that's all we have to worry about, so there's no point in having a list. We'll just have instance variables for left and right. That's all we need for a node class. Not too bad. So let's look at these three constructors. Here's our default constructor, which makes an empty tree. That might not seem very useful, and I agree, but we're going to need it later, so we're still going to implement it while we're here. An empty tree is a tree that has no nodes, so therefore the root is null. That's it. And we'll see why this is useful in just a moment. This constructor makes a little bit more sense. Constructs a tree with one node, no children. Here's the data for that root node. Cool. This is going to be a lot like the constructor we wrote for the arbitrary tree. So we need to make a new node and assign that reference to root. Root now refers to a new node. We better store that new node's data. So assign root data to this.root.data. Technically, this is all we need to do. I like to be extra explicit that there are that there is not a left child by explicitly assigning it to null. And the same thing with the right. If we left these two lines of code out, it would behave exactly the same, right? It's initialized to null by default. I just want to communicate that and be extra clear. So this constructor lets us build a tree with a single node in it. So we can't yet build anything we want. But if we add one more constructor, here's a constructor that lets us specify, that makes a new binary tree with the specified data as the root node, and a whole nother tree as the left, and a whole nother tree as the right. We didn't have a constructor like this for the arbitrary tree because we would need like a variable number of parameters, right, based on how many children we have. But since we know we have exactly two children, this is super convenient. It works out well. You may remember from AP Computer Science that the first line of code in a constructor can call another constructor by saying this parenthesis. So here, this line of code calls this constructor, which is convenient because I need all of this code to run, and then I can just deal with the specified left and right subtrees. So we'll do that first, and then I can just say this dot root that left, and often we write it like this, but it doesn't compile. The 
the error we get is that we cannot, it's a type mismatch, cannot convert from binary tree to binary tree node. Left is of type binary tree. This instance variable off the root is of type node. So they're not the same thing. So just keep, just, this is back to the whole idea that the binary tree is a class that wraps our nodes, which is our internal data structure. So I have to say left.root and right.root. So just watch out for that. All right. Let's look at some of these other methods. We've got a method here that returns the height of the tree. The height of the tree is the number of levels in the tree. The height of this tree is one, two, three, four different levels. Okay. That's another one of our terms. Um, here is our public method to calculate the height. We're going to use the same technique here we used in previous chapters a lot, a chapter, well, at least chapter 16 a lot. We're going to use a recur private recursive helper method <coughs> to recursively calculate the height. So in the public method, we're simply going to call the private recursive method. So binary tree dot height starting at the root. We need this parameter to kind of make the recursion work. Then in our private static helper method, we can actually do the recursion. So classic recursion, we need a terminating condition, which is the simplest case, the easiest question to answer. That is, what is the height of a tree that has no nodes? So if n is null, it's an empty tree. We know the height is zero, piece of cake. Otherwise, we take one small step towards the solution, namely, well, there's at least this node, so that's one level in the height. And we're going to add the height of the left subtree or the right subtree. But the left subtree, like if we're at does it fly, the left subtree doesn't necessarily have the same height as the left right subtree. And vice versa, if like we look over here with does it have stripes. So we really need to add in the maximum of the left and right. So we'll do math.max. We'll get the height of the left subtree compared to oops, the height of the right subtree. So one is the, the one plus is the small step towards the solution. We then punt to the left subtree and the right subtree and say, hey, just let me know what your height is. Left subtree, let me know what your right height is, right subtree. All right, which one is bigger? I'll add that to one and return that. So that's how height works. Yes. Oh, yeah, so I, I guess I'm just trying to be explicit here. Height is a static method. So it can be, it's not tied to any particular tree object. We're just using it to help with the recursion. So I'm using the class name to scope the method. Um, I could, if I leave this out, Java's going to figure it out. It's going to be like, oh, I know you mean the static method height. Um, I'm just being, oops. I'm just being extra explicit by saying we're calling the static method height in the binary tree class, which is this one here. All right, we got a couple more methods here before we can run our little program. So um, public Boolean is empty, checks whether the tree is empty. Actually, tell you what, 
we're going to pause for like four minutes. You're going to implement these next four methods. I am confident you can do so. And then we'll check with each other here in like three or four minutes. So start at is empty, do is empty, data, left, and right. 